Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to podcast 16.1. I'm going to call it A because it's freaking out a little bit. So I might stop this in the middle and switch it, spit it into two. So we're going to do all 16 in one podcast. Let's hop right into it. And we'll talk about my humps. Laws of thermodynamics. Basically, this is the fifth grade version of it. The first law of thermodynamics is energy is conserved, meaning energy is neither created nor destroyed. Second one is entropy tends to increase. Entropy is disorder. So disorder tends to increase. The third is absolute zero. All reactions stop, and entropy is zero at a perfect crystal. By the way, it is, it is at absolute zero. Um, oh, at absolute zero. Yep. So all reactions stop, and all motion stops. And what is entropy for us? Entropy is disorder. And we'll get into that more later. State function versus path function. State function is only dependent upon the final answer. How much energy is in a bond right now? The height of a rock right now. Path function is dependent upon the route, which would be, for example, work. So, you know, force times distance is work. So if I need to move a rock from here to here, it could be that much work or it could be that much work. Enthalpy. Delta H is enthalpy, which is basically heat energy. Delta H is heat of the reactants minus heat, I'm sorry, heat of the products minus heat of the reactants and use coefficients. So I'll do a quick example of that. Delta H up, oops, I did miss a triangle one. Um, heat of combustion for methane. Methane's combustion is CH4 plus O2, CO2 plus H2O. And with that, I have to balance it first. So I need two of these, which gives me two, four, and two of those. So products minus reactions, and these are things that will be given to you or in a table or something like that. So delta H the reaction, delta H products minus delta H reactants. So delta H the reaction is CO2, which is negative 393, and 10 to 1, plus, um, we got two waters, 2 times negative 286, 2 comes from the coefficient, minus, and I have to distribute this minus, CH4, and I have one of those, 1 times negative 75, plus, now they didn't give me a value for water, or oxygen, and that's because in a standard state, this is the energy to make it. In a standard state, the energy to make water, oxygen, I could call it, the energy to make oxygen is zero, so elements in the standard state are zero, elements in standard state equals zero. Okay. And then if I did that math, which I'm going to my calculator to do, um, negative 393 plus quantity 2 times negative 286 quantity is negative 965 minus negative 75 is minus negative 75 equals negative 890 kilojoules. This is all using reactions again, so give the delta H, I thought I went and saved all these things for um, this guy right here, and this is where you've got to flip it around. Now, just because I've combined two podcasts in one, I will be happy to do that in class if you guys remind me, but I'm not going to let your podcasting fun here. Energy diagrams, okay? An endothermic energy diagram. Endo means heat up. So I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm going to end up higher, okay? My reactants, reactants are here. My products, products are here. Transition state is the highest point. Activation energy is the energy from the reactant to the product. And delta H is the energy change right here. Delta H, the A. Activation energy is the energy to get you up to that highest part. Um, by the way, this would be heat energy. Heat energy, and this is time. So again, heat energy, or bond energy, really. It could be bond energy, it could be potential energy, either of those would work. And then this would be time. Now, if it's exothermic, I'm going to start in the middle, and I still need the first hump to get over, and then I'm going to end up lower. Reactants products, transition state, 
The energy to get you up to that transition state is EA, activation energy. Delta H, in this case, will be shown here. And it'll be made. Okay. Multiple humps. AP Chemistry loves to have this happy little uh, multiple hump thing. So if you've got something that looks like this, this means the reaction reactant product, it has one, two, three, four steps. And number four is the rate determining step because it has the highest EN. And if I wanted to have a catalyst affect something, I want my catalyst to affect number four. Enthalpy values have conditions. They have to be the standard state. The standard state is one atmosphere, one molar for solution, the normal state of matter, and 298K, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Isn't that weird? Because STP, notice this is not STP. Change these and change the enthalpy. Delta H of formation, right? The delta H formation for ethanol. F means two carbons. Carbon, carbon, all means hydroxide, and then the N means no double bonds. So it's C2H5OH. So I want to make C2H5OH. This is the entropy of formation. So to make C2H5OH from its element. So I need carbon in its standard state plus hydrogen in its standard state plus oxygen in its standard state. I have two carbons, that's the easiest pi. I have a total of six hydrogens, so three here. And I have one here, and I'm going to do one here. Okay. There's the delta H of formation for it. Okay? So that's the energy for heat of formation for it. And then I would get the numbers and do products, do products minus reactants. That's the delta H of formation of 5,5 dimethyl 2 hexine. Ooh, hexine means six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ine means a triple bond in number two. One, two. And 5, 5 dimethyl. Carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5. Methyl means a group of 1. And then H it all up. And remember, carbon can only have 4 bonds. That's why I don't have any H's around that middle part. And then I have to do my counting. So I know I'm going to end up with C6. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, H14. And that's it. Okay. Um, if you're an organic, you can figure out how to do that even shorter. Um, so what I'm going to do is 6 carbons plus 7 hydrogens. You have that. Just a reminder, bonds can be used for delta H calculations as well. Break, absorb energy, release energy when bonds form. Entropy is a measure of disorder. Now we talked about disorder in the first line. Delta S is entropy and is measured in joules per mole Kelvin. This is a dumb unit because everything else we're going to use with is in kilojoules. So just realize that. If you want to know what the S stands for, it's not disorder. It stands for stupid unit. Okay? S has a stupid unit because you always have to convert when you use it. Disorder is not measured by number of particles. More is greater disorder. Increase in randomness, that's shuffleability, and states of matter. Solid is less than liquid, is less than aqueous, is much, 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 much less than gas. Delta S is zero. When you have a crystal, which means a solid, at absolute zero. So the entropy increases or decreases. So remember, gases are the Mac Daddy. Think gases. This side has five gases. This side has two gases. So the entropy increases, delta S increases because I have more gases. So here I've got a solid, a lit, six liquids, three solids, two gases. Oh, I've got more gases. Delta S, I'm sure. Delta S increases because there's more gases. Spontaneity, so whether or not a reaction will happen, not how fast. Okay? 
but maybe will it happen? For example, water bottles boil spontaneously at 100 degrees Celsius. Pots them on the side of the road. In the winter, it decomposes slowly, but spontaneously. In the summer, it decomposes quickly, but not but, well, I guess and spontaneously. So something going to be slow and spontaneous or fast and spontaneous. In terms of heat energy, what makes a reaction favored? High or low energy. So think about this. You know where I'm going with this. If you, it's my little energy diagram here, if this is a high energy reactant product, what does a baby like? Right? Delta H measures the energy, so there's an the so favor. Remember, high energy, two babies like to have a high energy or low energy. Let's start with low. Here's a little baby. Rockify baby. Slow makes baby happy, right? So low equals happy. But what happens if you have high energy? Ah! If you shake a baby, it causes brain damage and death, which is terrible. Irreversible brain damage. Now, I'm going to guess brain damage, all of you would think that high energy is bad, is unfavored. So is endo or exo favored? Exo is favored because it reduces energy. Gives free energy. This is spontaneity for us. It's called delta G. It's calculated by a couple of different equations. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Notice I put that unit in there because you have a stupid unit you have to deal with. Temperature has to be in Kelvin. If delta G is negative, the reaction is spontaneous. All right, that means it's going to happen. It doesn't tell us the speed, but it tells us it's going to happen. Delta G is positive, the reaction is non-spontaneous. That means the reaction will not happen. If delta G is zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. And delta G not is also zero for elements in the standard state, just like delta H not F. And really, that's an F formation. Temperature is always positive, Kelvin. So if delta G is, well, if delta H is, this way, is positive minus, and if T delta S is positive, a positive minus is po I'm sorry, a positive minus a positive is um, you're not sure, okay? So that means equilibrium is possible. Spontaneous, maybe, and equilibrium is possible. The reason why equilibrium is possible because it could be negative. So seven minus three is positive, but three minus seven is negative, okay? What if I have a positive minus a negative, right? T, remember, T is going to be positive, so I'm going to get rid of it. Um, minus negative is plus a positive. That means delta G will always be positive. Well, if delta G is positive, the spontane spontaneity will be always spontaneous. Okay? Again, positive and negative delta S. What if I have a negative minus a negative? Minus negative is plus a positive. Hmm, that depends on the size. Okay, so instead of question mark, I should put depends. This one also depends. And spontaneity depends, what does it depend on? On temperature. And equilibrium is possible. What if I had a negative minus a positive? Again, delta H and delta S. Negative minus a positive is always going to be negative. So, oops. So if it's negative, that means it will be always spontaneous. Now, I made a boo-boo here. This is never spontaneous. If delta G is positive, it is never spontaneous. Please, please, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Mark that down. There's your extra credit question. I know Maggie already has it. Good job, Maggie. Other equations, delta G equals negative RT ln K. That's an 8.314 R. Temperatures in Kelvin. This is K like KEQ. Okay. Delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln Q. This means not at equilibrium. Q naught is standard conditions. Naught doesn't mean much to us, so we can usually ignore it. Review. Energy is conserved. Blah, 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 blah. Energy is conserved. Entropy increases. And a crystal at absolute zero has an entropy of zero. Know your equations. Standard state conditions. And I forgot to play my black eyed peas again, but know your humps. Your humps, your lovely, whatever humps. Check it out. Toodles.